There is not a death that ends all. And so from that, through history, there has been born a different set of lies. One about ghosts and spirits and the idea that we go straight to heaven or hell when we die. People do not have souls. You may be surprised to hear me say that, but inside of us is not a floaty, weird organism that comes out and makes us lighter when we die and thinks on its own and can walk around and haunt people. There is no evidence scientifically that that happens. And the evidence that has been gained for that, I believe, was because of demons. We're going to be talking about some other scary things in future lectures, including things like apparitions, where people actually see a ghost, or they'll actually see Mother Mary, or they'll actually see a UFO, or a Sasquatch, or whatever, and I believe that they do see those things, but that they aren't the departed spirit of a loved one, but instead a demon impersonating. I have a true story to share with you. There is a hut out in Africa, heat waves, you can barely see it. We come into this hut, and there's a wife of a husband, he's preaching somewhere, and she is crying unable to complete her task of cleaning the dishes. She's weeping because her two daughters got malaria and they had died a week before. All of a sudden she hears laughing and little feet running up the path and in comes through the front door her two little daughters after they have departed and they run up she falls down onto the kitchen chair and they jump on her lap and they say, Mommy, can we go on a walk? And she says, there, there is not life after death. Get behind me, Satan. And these little girls smiled the most evil, sickening smile you've ever seen. And then they disappeared from view completely. This is a true story. She knew that the spirits of departed people do not roam the planet. And so she correctly discerned exactly what she was looking at. And she said, get away. And indeed, that's what happened. Feel uncomfortable? So the lies are you can't trust God. You will not surely die. You will be like God. The last one, Satan said, Eve, if you eat this fruit, you're going to be like him, knowing everything. And Eve said, well, I'd like to be smarter. Eve was already brilliant, but I'd like to be smarter. And that has progressed into one of the worldviews on that sheet, pantheism. People believe that they have an inner divinity. This is why Eastern religions bow to each other. This is why uh, there are groups of people who believe that we're going to, in 2012, move on to the next stage of our evolution and that we're going to be entities who are able to transcend our bodies and that the society in a whole uh, will move into a special state of consciousness that is unlike ours right now. Pantheism. This began in Eden. Satan used the same three lies through the whole thing. The translation is, you can trust Satan. The wages of sin is eternal life and worship yourself. The first lie, God is not who he says he is, ended up with uh, things like Baal worship. Baal was a big cow, basically. And people would, this is, I don't know if you can see it, but there, there's a gentleman standing on a big stone pillar up before a large statue. And the statue's hands are red hot and he's holding an infant up to be sit onto these red hot hands to die as a sacrifice to what, she, what he believes is uh, an entity that needs to be appeased, otherwise his life will not be worth anything. This is the kind of worship that Satan desires, not what God desires. Satan's lies. Love anything besides God and I'll be made happy with you. So this is not what he says out loud, but this is his motivation. That's why the Mayan culture sacrificed people, pulled their heart out, hopefully so that they could see it beating before they died, all to this sun god. 
Satan marks his territory kind of like a dog. He uses different symbols. And when you see these symbols, they are frequently derived from a system of pagan worship. You may recognize some of them as I go through them. There are things like eyes, suns, uh, various symbols, fish, uh, the Baal Hadad, there's the phallic symbol, uh, which we will have very few examples of, the goat, and the serpent, and there's lots more. So here's some examples of the eye, or sorry, uh, this is the sun. Last one was the, the eye symbols. The sun symbols, these are solar disks and different things. You know, this is maybe reminiscent of if you've ever seen, uh, what was that movie? It was the Da Vinci Code. You're listening to a lecture kind of like what uh, those people might have been hearing up there. Except I don't look as good as Tom Hanks. Uh, or maybe I look better than Tom Hanks to my wife. Yes. Uh, so you, re you recognize some of these symbols. These are also from pagan worship. Here's the fish symbols. People used to dress up like fish. And uh, this particular way of dressing has progressed into some modern things that we'll be talking about later in this series. You'll be surprised as we look further at these in, uh, I believe it's the uh, eighth, ninth lecture, that uh, these things are not uncommon these days. And that this, the, the same groups of people, druids and pagans and that sort of thing, have a very big and profound effect on this world today. Then, of course, there's the Baal Hadad, used in different flags of the world. Initially, it was a uh, bull with a sun sitting in it. It's from Egyptian mythology, and it's made its way into all kinds of places. The phallic symbol, that's a stella, also known as uh, an obelisk. There's one in Egypt, one in Greece. There's one is, uh, sorry, this one's in Rome, the third one over on the right. Uh, is in Rome, and they actually imported it from Egypt. And then, of course, there's uh, the goat symbol. The goat fits just nicely into a pentagram, and that is part of the motivation for it being an upside-down pentagram, though it doesn't matter if it's right side up or upside down. Um, then, of course, there's dragons and that sort of thing on different thrones of different emperors and leaders in the world. I think I talked about this. Oh, there's the hut that I was talking about earlier, where the little girls uh, manifested and were demons. And I'm going to be talking about that. <clears throat> In 1 Corinthians 15.52, uh, we encounter a promise uh, that should give us hope. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet... For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself in the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. Remember I talked about perfection of Eden. A few things went wrong. We've been getting worse ever since. And now, we've reached a place where we're almost beyond repair to us. But God will come back, and he will restore the perfection that once was. The saying is written that uh, the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. There will be a time when we do not we don't have to worry about dying. I'm going to be talking about death uh, next Friday. There's a few things that you must be dying to know about death, and so I encourage you to come and listen for that. One of the lies was you'll be like God. Remember. When we look at uh, Tai Chi, the teachings of Deepak Chopra, Chopra uh, transcendental meditation the, and chakras and that sort of thing, these are all uh, things that have sprung forth from that way of thinking and are prevalent today. But God hates sin. Imagine his reaction to the way that Satan was doing things. But he responded in love by silencing towns and cultures who were totally corrupt. You think of the flood. People say, why did God do the flood? If you lived next door and you heard little kids being tortured every night 